thing you're going to want to do is create an Airtable account. Once you've created your Airtable account, you want to get to the bug tracker template that I'm showing here. This is the template we're going to use to create our customer support system. In order to get to the bug tracker template, you need to come into your Airtable account. If you're on bases, go ahead and hit templates and then come down and type in bug. From there, you're going to want to select the one with the bug on it and then go ahead and hit use template. Now we're ready to make it our customer support system. In the bug tracker, once you have it duplicated, we are going to make quite a few adjustments so that we can get this really down to size. <laughs> this is meant to be used on the free version. There are a lot of apps that come included with this particular template that are amazing, but they do require a paid account. So if you're using a free account, just go ahead and click that little X. It'll hide it for you, but not delete it. If you should ever update your account at a later time, that's already built in for you and you won't need to worry about making changes. If you want to adjust what things say here, you can go ahead and delete out this description. Keep it however you'd like. To adjust the name, just click on Bug Tracker. I'll show you what mine looks like. So you would click on this here, change it, and change the color, the icon, okay? So we're just looking at the large view here so that I can do a comparison for you and tell you what all I have changed. The first thing you're gonna wanna look at is bugs and issues. This is kind of the main view. And if you have this views on, you can go ahead and collapse that for now so you can really see the full view of the table. This is pre-filled with a lot of great information, but it's a little bit overwhelming to look at. So you can go ahead and click that and then just hit delete. So you're going to select all of those. And because I'm not in there, let me show you. I'm gonna select all of those and go ahead and hit delete. Oops. And delete all selected records. Once you have all of those records deleted, we're gonna jump over to team members and do the same thing. Again, there's a ton of information in here and it can be a little bit overwhelming because we are moving things around. So follow that same process. And in features, you can go ahead and follow the same process unless you see something in here that you'd like to keep. So if this is an iOS app, a web app, Android app, you could keep those. Um, but I, again, I find it's best to start with a clean slate. Just delete that information out of there. Once you have all of that deleted, go ahead and keep this up and I'll show you how to adjust this template. So as you can see, I'm still in Airtable and I left up on the right side of the screen here, the original bug tracker template. That'll help as we walk through what I've done to adjust this template. I did make quite a few changes. This is just really a starting point for you and give you some idea of how you can really take full advantage of this base of bug tracker and turn it into a customer support system. So the first thing that I did was change this first column. Right now you have name. Oftentimes this first column is used in a lot of uh, formulas and different fields. And there's a lot of limited functionality. For example, you can't change this field to be a multi-select field, um, which sometimes can cause a little bit of issue. And I just find there isn't enough functionality for myself. So I always change that first field to an auto number field. They do have an auto number field in this template. And I think it's much further over. It might actually even be hidden. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and unhide, show all. And maybe there isn't, doesn't look like there's an auto number in there. So the easiest thing to do to uh, kind of make that first column here in the new template auto number is you can go ahead and in your template, you'll get an option. And just a heads up, this name field I have renamed to Brief Reported Issue. So you can go ahead and click that little drop down and hit Duplicate Field. That field will move it over. And now you have the option to rename this first field. So from there, 
you can just click your little drop down, customize field type. I call it request number, whatever you'd like, and select auto number. Perfect. Now you have a blank slate. From here, I kind of move things around a little bit just to fit what I was more comfortable with. So again, this is just user preference. As you can see, I have auto number, status, brief issue, which is name. And I added a new column called feedback type. You're going to want to add this because this will help us differentiate between feature requests and bug requests when we alter the form. So to create a new field, you would just click in between there, right click and hit new insert new field. It can be to the left or the right, wherever you'd like it to go. From there, you'll get the options to pick whatever you'd like. This was a single select, name it, and then add your options. You can choose a colored option or not, it's totally up to you. So go ahead and hit create field. From there, I just again move things around, the attachment field, and I added another field in before this assigned to called report sources. So we want to know who is reporting these issues. You want a place to keep track of everything that's going on with your system. So that means internally and externally. So here I've added an option to, you know, choose if this was a customer reporting a feature or a bug or you as an internal staff member. If that's not relevant, feel free to disregard it. From there, you can see I have just moved things around and made a couple of changes. We're going to go over a couple of these fields, the links fields next, but just wanted to show you what all I've done. So I've left all of these amazing fields that they have created for you from Airtable to start. The open date and time are formulas. You can go ahead and click in there and look at that formula. For me, I did not want it to be GMT. So I clicked on formatting and took that off. You can go ahead and keep that if you would like, depending on where you're located, that may be relevant. For me, it was not. So you can make those adjustments. You can hide these fields if that's not something you want to constantly be looking at. But as you can see, there's a lot of great information in here that was already built out for us that we can really use to our advantage. So how many days old these formulas are already built in. Duplicates is a pretty great field. This is a linked field, and I'll discuss linked fields in a second. So if a customer and a staff both reported the same feature request, you could go ahead and hit duplicate, or maybe a customer has reported it multiple times. This allows you to keep track of duplicate requests and remove them as needed. Associated features, again, this may or may not be relevant depending on what your product is. So this is a linked field to this product feature category. And if you wanted to uh, delete this out completely, if it's not relevant, you can go ahead and do that. Created by is linked to team members. And then you have lots of other function fields, notification status, complete, close, whether or not you've notified the user, the custom, uh, customer account is new and so you're going to want to put that email address in there we're going to use that in a future form so everything after notified users i have added so customer account email again you would do the same thing so just right click hit insert to the, the right or the left your field is an email field and then I've done an opt-in marketing. So we're gonna add this to our form. This is a great way to build your newsletter. If they're already filling out a form for a feature request or because there's an issue, you have an opportunity to capture their email and have them opt in for your marketing campaign. So again, totally up to you, but feel free to put that here as well. So now we have this initial form all set up. Now that it's set up, let's talk about linked records before we look at a couple of the other forms and views you can create in Airtable.